Do you ever find yourself drinking a beer and you get pear drops, roses, cloves, or medicine? It's time for Beery Theory. Let's get volatile. Welcome to Beery Theory, where today we're asking, do you know your esters from your phenols? Phenols? Many beer reviewers out there, far more learned than I, throw around these terms when describing the aroma and flavour of beer. But what the hell are they on about? They're both organic compounds that can really add to the flavour or aroma of some of your beers, and a key to some of the most important beer styles out there. But they're not always welcome. Let's start with esters. The fruity aromas you sometimes get in beer of banana, apple, pear drops, and even roses and honey come from something called yeast esters. During fermentation, a reaction occurs between the organic acids present in the wort and the building alcohol, causing esters to form. Remember, wort is the sweet, malty starter liquid for beer that really gets yeast going to produce alcohol. So you get these esters from the reaction of acid and alcohol during the fermentation process. But what gives them their different characteristics? How can one be pear droppy and one be honey? E. It comes down to three key factors. The wort composition. A more sugary or zinky wort can build up ester levels, whilst more oxygen or lipids can reduce it. The yeast. Some yeast strains produce more esters. Bavarian wheat yeast, for example, readily produce isoamyl acetate, the signature banana flavour found in those styles. Esters are pretty undesirable in lagers, so lager yeasts tend to produce less of these, while ale yeasts no holds barred. And the environment. The fermentation environment, even coming down to the shape of the tanks, can produce lower levels of esters. Tall, narrow fermenters produce lower levels than shallower open tanks. It's all down to pressure and how much CO2 is there to go around. So what about phenols? You may hear people going around saying, hmm, I'm getting phenols, or this is phenolic. Uh, no one does that. What they're referring to is an undesirable level of phenol, a volatile phenol. Small side note, they are welcome in some beers, especially if you're looking for smoke, clove, or medicine. Who's looking for that? A phenol is just another set of organic compounds containing a hydroxyl and a hydrocarbon ring. What? Ground zero for phenols is in the water. This is how it works its way into the beer, either through shoddily kept equipment or whether it's not eradicated in the bort. Oh my god, I just said bought instead of boil. Hops and malts can contain them as well, in the form of tannins. This is that sensation of when you drink a beer and you get that dry feeling on your tongue like you just had a big old pint of tea. And chlorine and bromine, especially in the water, can give a really antiseptic, burning feeling to the beer. So you can see why a lot of people that make beer are pretty uh, meticulous when it comes to cleaning their equipment. Finally, even yeast and bacteria can bring phenols to the table. This is how you get the clovey character in Belgian wheat beer and the real flavour in Belgian beer. So there you have it. It may seem like esters are the welcome fruity friends, whereas phenols are the spicy medicinal medlars. Oh my god, that was genius. That may be a fair assumption, but these amazing organic compounds challenge brewers worldwide to tweak styles to really embrace the sweaty dog blanket nature of phenols. And I mean, if they give Belgian beer their character, they can't be all bad, right? That's all for this episode of Beery Theory. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you feel more confident now going to a bar, ordering a beer and saying, hmm, the esters are bringing a pear nature whilst the phenols are really lacking in the sweaty fur sensation. That just leaves for me to say, subscribe if you like what you saw head over to our Beery Theory playlist for all the other episodes, including different outfits and studios throughout the years. It's great to be back doing this mini-series, and I can't wait for the next one about 